Recently, I went behind the scenes of the conservation lab with Mel Sorensen. Mel talks about her work preparing some of the items selected to appear in the 50 Treasures exhibition. So today, Mark, I'll be working on the pages that form a part of the A.H. Talbot archive. Uh, they're diary pages from a droving trip that Mr. Talbot made through the Central Queensland Division in 1878. The pages will form a lovely part of the Treasures show that's a part of the JCU exhibition in October. Um, the pages unfortunately have suffered extensive pest damage and paper splitting um, from poor storage previously. You can see the um, vertical paper splits that have occurred um, through folding of the, of the pages. This has created a weak point, which has then resulted in paper splits through the paper. Um, there's also some grain dirt across the surface of every single page. On this sleeve, we can see uh, the extensive pest damage through here. We can see iron gall ink across the paper. Iron gall ink, which we see an example of in the Talbot archives, is a common media that's been used throughout history. It has often been referred to as the poor man's ink because it was so common, but I prefer to refer to it as the ink of kings, monks and poets, just because it was a common media. A lot of our internationally significant and nationally significant archive material and artworks are actually uh, consisting of iron gall ink. Iron gall ink, by its very nature, is destined for deterioration. Iron gall ink is simply made from iron sulphate, tannins derived from galls of trees, typically acorn or oak trees, uh, gum arabic, and water. Catalysts for the deterioration of iron gall ink are exposure to oxygen and moisture. So our typical environment unfortunately is the catalyst for the deterioration processes of iron gall ink. What we see with iron gall ink through its various stages of deterioration is essentially a redox reaction. We can think of a redox reaction in our everyday world as rust that we see on steel or iron substrates. The deterioration that we see in iron gall ink can be categorised under four different headings. The first stage is known as halo or burn. This presents as darkened areas beyond the pen stroke particularly in archive pages. We can see this starting already in the Talbot archive leaves. The next stage of deterioration is called strike through. Strike through can be seen on the verso or the reverse side of archive pages. And it's as the ink gradually eats its way through the paper substrate upon which it sits. The next phase is known as lacing. Lacing is when the ink within the pen stroke becomes quite brittle. It's eaten away at the paper almost entirely. And if you touch it, it can actually just snap off and it may drop out of the paper entirely, creating a hole. Holes are the fourth and final stage of deterioration for iron gall ink. Unfortunately, this is commonly seen in archived letter books that may have been held in collections that are in tropical regions. This is due to a high level of relative humidity, exposure to moisture and oxygen. With the Talbot archives, we're really fortunate that we're really only seeing first glimpses of the first stage of the deterioration processes, known as halo or burn. Along with collection management strategies, cool to cold storage, stable storage, uh, honouring exhibition parameters or recommended exhibition parameters and with the conservation treatment I have provided, I would expect that the Talbot archives will be stable for many years to come 
and hopefully won't progress through the next three stages of deterioration in our lifetime. So as a conservative for these um, treasured items, I'll be creating a uh, conservation grade adhesive and then using the world's thinnest tissue called Berlin tissue to um, reintegrate strength into the paper and to repair the paper splits. Uh, by the end of the treatment, the paper should be stronger and, and ready for show in October. So what we're looking at here collectively with the 25 pages from the archive is once I've gone through and done the solubility testing, prepared the adhesive, prepared the tissue, just the repair work alone is at least 50 hours worth of conservation work. And that's a conservative estimate. Okay. So um, with the Berlin tissue, it is the world's thinnest tissue and it's perfect for using it for repairs for double-sided archives and also archi older archive material that um, has iron gall ink in the media. Um, the tissue that I have, so that's two layers of the tissue, this is a single layer of the tissue and you can see that once it's overlaid the text it's incredibly transparent. Once it's impregnated with the adhesive, it's then laid over the weakened areas of the archive. And once it's dry, uh, the text is still legible and the repairs are completely invisible. So once the adhesive's laid into it, it completely disappears. And so the beauty of this repair paper mark is that we can actually do what's called a double laminate or a double sided repair. So I can use this tissue on both sides of a double sided archive and um, it doesn't interrupt the legibility of the text. If the archive is to be digitised afterwards, all of those processes are still enabled in spite of the repair paper being laid down. So what I'm doing at the moment is I'm preparing the conservation grade adhesive. So using a magnetic bar, I'm using a magnetic stirrer. 